Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Grady Tech and in this video, I'll be showing you all the best features of the Vivo V20 SE. By the way guys, I'll also be posting a dedicated video for the tips and tricks section where I'll be covering many things which I won't be showing you in this video. So definitely check out that video, link will be in the description. Now with that said, the most highlighting feature about this phone are definitely its cameras. For selfies, you get a 32 megapixel camera and on the rear, it has a triple camera setup with a 48 megapixel primary camera. All the cameras on this phone, especially both the front and rear cameras, are pretty good and these are the sample pictures. Next best thing about this phone is definitely its overall design and build. This phone has a pretty sleek form factor, has a thickness of 7.83mm and weighs just 171 grams. Nowadays, most of the phones in this price segment are usually much larger and quite bulky. And compared to all those phones, this phone is definitely much more sleeker and fits pretty comfortably in a single hand. And that's definitely one of its selling point. By the way, it's available in two colors, Gravity Black and Aqua Green. And this is the Gravity Black color. Next best thing about this phone is definitely its display. This phone has a 6.44 inch AMOLED display with Full HD Plus resolution with 90.12% screen to body ratio. And once again, this is one of the few phones where you get an actual AMOLED display in this price segment. As it's an AMOLED display, colors look pretty vivid, brightness levels are great, and you get true blacks. So whether it's for playing games or watching content, you will have a great experience because of the AMOLED display. By the way, this phone also has wide one L1 support, so you can watch videos in high definition on Netflix and Amazon Prime. Next, this phone also packs in some decent performance. It sports a Snapdragon 665 processor with Adreno 610 GPU with 8GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. These are the benchmark scores. Compared to some online exclusive phones, performance is definitely not that great. But for a retail phone and if you're a normal user, it's definitely more than sufficient. Next, this phone also comes with an in-display fingerprint scanner. And just like all other Vivo phones, it is super fast. It almost instantaneously unlocks the phone. Next, this phone also has Flash Charge 2.0. Inside the box, we get a 33 watt flash charger. Vivo calls it Flash Charge 2.0, and it can charge its 4100 mAh battery from 0 to 60% in just 30 minutes. So, charging speeds on this phone are really pretty fast. Next, this phone also comes with a wide angle camera and it does take some pretty wide-angle pictures. These are the sample shots. Next, we have Super Macro Mode. This is a new feature that allows you to take pictures of close-up objects and Vivo does a pretty decent job with it. These are some sample shots. Next we have a dedicated night mode for the rear camera and this is a camera interface. As of now night mode isn't all that impressive but might improve with a future update. These are some sample shots. Next, we also have a dedicated night mode for selfies. These are some sample shots. Next, we have a dedicated 48 MP mode for the rear camera. By default, your phone takes pictures in compressed format because of pixel binning. So if you want to take a high resolution picture with a lot more details, then you can use this mode. Next we have posture mode. Now this is a brand new feature from Vivo that will allow you to take better pictures in different poses. Once you enable this feature, a frame appears on the screen to track your position and guides you into a stylish pose that can stand out from the crowd. At the end of the day, it will make you a pose master. Next we have panorama selfies. 
Now this feature allows you to take wide angle shots using the front facing camera. This feature can give you some pretty wide angle selfies. Next we have portrait mode for both the front and rear cameras. There isn't much to talk about it. So these are the sample pictures. Next we have short refocus. Unlike the regular portrait mode, this phone has a feature called short refocus where you can actually select the focus point and change the amount of background blur effect you want before taking a picture. And even after taking a picture, you can change the focus point and the amount of background blur effect you want from the stock gallery application. Now going on next, this phone even has face beauty mode. Now the name seems familiar, but usually most phones just improve the skin tones. But on this phone, we can make real time changes to your face. Like we can change the skin tones, make your face thinner, reshape your face, and do lot more stuff like that. Next we have different portrait light effects. Just like the iPhones, we can choose different lighting effects while taking portrait shots. We can choose between natural lights, studio lights and so on. Next this phone even offers electronic image stabilization while recording video. Here's a sample footage. Next we have slow motion video recording or slow mo. This is a sample footage. Next we have AR stickers. Using this feature we can add stickers to our face. There are a few pre-installed ones and you can take some pretty funny looking pictures with them. Next we have some camera gestures. First one is touch to capture. Simply touch the screen to capture the shot. Next we have voice capture. Once you enable this feature, every time you say cheese, your phone will take a picture. Here's a quick preview. Cheese. Cheese. Now the final gesture is palm. Once you enable this feature, just show your palm to your camera and it'll take a picture in 2 seconds. This feature can be really handy while taking selfies. Next we have live photo mode. Once you enable this feature, every time you take a picture, along with the picture, your phone will record few seconds as video and link it with the picture. You can check out the video behind every picture just by doing a long press on the picture. Next, this phone also supports 4K video recording. This is one of the few phones that offer this feature. Here's a quick video sample. Going on next, this phone also has an in-display fingerprint scanner and just like all other vivo phones, it is pretty fast. Next we have multiple fingerprint animation styles. So if you are bored with the default one, you can choose to go with a different one. And here's a quick preview. Next we also have different fingerprint icon patterns. So once again, if you're bored with the default fingerprint icon pattern, you can change it from settings. And here's a quick preview. Going on next, we also have the face unlock feature on this phone. And once again, it is pretty fast. In good lighting conditions, it's almost instantaneous. It just takes less than a second. Even in low lighting conditions, it is pretty fast, definitely usable. 
and surprisingly even in complete darkness it works but it is slightly slower. Next we have Vivo Share. This is another new feature on the Vivo phones which allows you to share files between Vivo phones easily. Like all Vivo phones have Vivo Share pre-installed so you can easily share files between Vivo phones. It's just like Share It but for Vivo phones and if you have Vivo Share installed on your PC you can also transfer files between your PC and phone pretty easily. Next we have a new home screen gesture to pull down the notification bar. By default when you do a swipe down gesture on your home screen it brings up global search. But from home screen settings you can change it to pull down the notification bar whenever you slide down on the home screen. This is something I would recommend you to do. Next we have a dedicated dark mode. Now once you enable this feature it turns all the UI elements to dark theme and now the phone will look much more cooler. It strains your eyes less at night and you can also schedule it to automatically turn on and turn off at a specific time. Once you enable the dark mode, some of the stock applications like the phone dialer and SMS application also change their theme. Next we have Smart Split. On this phone we have a super shortcut to open split screen mode anywhere, anytime just by swiping down with three fingers and it starts the split screen mode. On previous Vivo phones, we were able to use split screen mode only in few applications. But on this phone, we can use it with almost all the applications. Next we have always on display. This is a pretty well known feature that keeps the display always on. Once you lock your phone, this feature will display important information like date and time and notifications on the display. From settings, you can also change the clock style and you can get the option to automatically turn on and turn off always on display at a specific time to save some battery. Next we have App Encryption. For the first time when you open it up, it will ask you to set up a password and then select the applications that you want to lock. We can also unlock the locked applications using the password or the fingerprint scanner or even by using the face unlock feature. If you use face unlock feature, most of the time whenever you open a locked application because of that super fast face unlock speeds, you won't even see the lock screen. Next we have one handed mode. This phone has a massive screen and obviously you need two hands to use this phone. But for some reason if you want to use this phone single handedly or maybe unlock the password or use the keyboard single handedly, you can do all that using this feature. You can just swipe your finger in a particular way to shrink the screen and you can repeat it again to make it big again. Next we have three finger screenshot. Now before I show you how to use that, let me show you how to take a normal screenshot. Just press the volume down and power button both at the same time to take a screenshot. Now this particular trick is pretty simple and works with almost all the Android phones. Now coming back to the three finger screenshot, simply enable this feature and swipe down using three fingers to take a screenshot. Personally I love this feature and if you are someone who takes a lot of screenshots on your phone then this can be really useful. Next we have long screenshot. Now for some reason if you want to take a longer screenshot, maybe a screenshot of a web page or something else, this is what you need to do. First take a regular screenshot. You can use the buttons or the gesture. Now you will get a small preview window. Just click that and then click long screenshot button to take a long screenshot. Here's a quick preview. Now going on next, I'm going to show you how to stop or allow applications from running in the background. By default, this phone is configured to kill all the applications that are running in the background after some time. But for some reason, if you don't want some applications to be killed, say like WhatsApp or Facebook, you can whitelist those applications from here. Next we have Auto Start Management. When you kill applications from the recent apps page, some applications restart automatically and then they run in the background. Applications like Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp might be important but some applications like Amazon, Flipkart or even UC Browser need not run in the background automatically. So from this page, you can stop those applications from automatically restarting in the background and thereby improving some battery life. Next we have Game Space. Now this is an application that simply lists all the games that are available on your phone in a pretty cool user interface. It also gives you complete stats of your gameplay, like how long you have been playing the game, how much data it has consumed over Wi-Fi or mobile data and more information like that. Next we have 4D Game Vibration. Now this is a brand new feature that Vivo brought in especially for gamers. Once you enable this feature, your phone vibrates differently for gunshots on games like PUBG. 
Next we have Game Assistant. Now once you enable this feature for a particular game, you can swipe from the left side corner to bring up a panel with some quick actions. Next we have Double Tap to Wake. Just like the name suggests, once you enable this feature, you can double tap the screen when your phone is locked to wake it up. This particular feature works really well with face unlock feature. Just double tap the screen, display lights up and sees your face and then immediately unlocks the phone. Overall, you'll have a very immersive experience without losing on security. Next we have smart wake gestures. Now these are just screen off gestures but we will like to call them the smart wake gestures. So these are all the gestures that are available. We can do a swipe up gesture when the phone is locked to unlock the phone. We can swipe it down to open the camera application. We can draw a C to open the phone dialer. And draw M to play music. And there are a lot more stuff like that. So definitely check them out. Next we have Rest to Wake feature. Now just like the name suggests, once you enable this feature, whenever you pick up your phone, screen lights up and shows you the lock screen. If you have enabled face unlock feature, every time you lift your phone, display lights up, front facing camera sees your face and immediately unlocks the phone. Once again, just like the double tap to wake feature, even this feature can give you a much more immersive experience, but sometimes it can be annoying. Next we have a feature called App Clone. This feature allows you to use two versions of the same application at the same time. You just need to enable this feature for the applications that you want to use and then you will be able to find two instances of the same application on your home screen. With this feature, you can use two Facebook accounts, two Instagram accounts, two WhatsApp accounts and so on. It's a pretty cool feature but only supports few applications. Next we have lot of smart call features which I would recommend you to check them out yourself. You can put your phone near your ear to lift the call. Hold it in your hand to turn on the speaker mode, swipe over the proximity sensor to lift the call and do some other crazy stuff. So check them out yourself. Next we have shake to turn on the flash. Now once you enable this feature, you can shake your phone in the lock screen or the home screen to turn on the flash. Once the flash is turned on, you can press the power button to turn it off. This feature is kinda hard to use. So personally, I never used it. Instead, I use the smart click feature to turn on the flash. Next we have is capture. I've already shown you how to take a regular screenshot, long screenshot and the three finger screenshot. But this phone still offers a lot of things related to screenshots. We can access the super screenshot feature from the toggles and once you select it, you get a lot of options. We can take a long screenshot, rectangular screenshot, we can even record the screen and take some funny screenshots as well. This is something you should definitely check. Next we have flashlight notification. Once you enable this feature, every time you get a call or a message, LED light or the flashlight on the back flickers, giving you a visible indication. Next we have Easy Touch, which is like a floating bubble just like on the iPhones with some additional options. You can tap it once for additional options. You can also choose a custom action for double tap like going back, going to the home screen or pulling down the notification bar. This feature is exactly like the floating bubble on the iOS. Next we have eye protection mode. According to a research, using smartphones, tablets or anything that emits a blue light will affect your sleep. So once you enable this feature, it puts a warm tint on the screen and filters the blue light. You can also change the intensity of the tint to make the display look more warmer or a little bit lighter. You can also schedule it to automatically turn on and turn off at a specific time. Next we have schedule power on and power off and as the name suggests, it'll allow you to power off and power on your phone at a specific time. Next we have digital well-being. This is a feature from Google which tracks all your usage and gives you complete analysis of which apps you're using more. You can also use this feature to restrict your own usage to have a healthy digital life. Next we have bedtime mode. Now this feature is part of digital well-being which can help you sleep faster at night. Using this feature, we can schedule your phone to turn on grayscale mode and do not disturb mode at a specific time. Grayscale mode makes your display white and black and do not disturb mode just makes your phone more silent. And overall, it helps you sleep faster at night. So guys, these are all the features offered by this phone. 
If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video and definitely check out my video on the tips and tricks section. Link will be in the description. By the way, if you are planning to buy this phone, use the link in the description. It always helps the channel. If you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. I am Nikhil from Greedy Tech signing off. Have a nice day.